I got to do a quick review of the Cooletron DDS 60 megahertz function generator got from a company called uh, Castone Corp on Amazon. So let's get to it. So this is what it looks like. Um, it's pretty easy to operate, just a few buttons across the top and you get a nice uh, LCD screen here to tell you what's going on. Um, so to select what kind of uh, wave type you want to have come out of it, you basically press the wave button. You can see right in here it's on sine. So if you press this, uh, you have the option of sine wave, square wave, pulse, triangle, and basically a bunch of uh, arbitrary waves. So right now we'll have, we'll select sine. Uh, to change the frequency, you press the frequency button. And right now it's set to uh, 10 kilohertz or 10,000 hertz. Amplitudes and how much power do you want out of this thing? Right now it's set to five volts. Uh, let me go up here real quick again. If you want to change the frequency, press this. Then you use this to move the cursor around. You can see the red selection. So if I wanted to say make this uh, 50 kilohertz, I move it to here, selected the one and turn the knob. So now I'm at 50 kilohertz. Or if I want 100 kilohertz, say one megahertz, go up to one and go down here like this. And now we're at one megahertz. Uh, this is the offset uh, duty cycle, which makes a little bit more sense for the pulse or square wave type things and uh, any sort of phase shifting. So let me, uh, I have, right now I have this thing connected up to a, uh, a Rigel scope, which looks like this. And so, um, so right now we're looking at uh, that previous setting, the one megahertz, five volts peak to peak. And um, there you go. And so you can kind of see me change the settings here. So if I go over here and I say change this to two megahertz, you can actually see the output there changing on the Rigel scope. You're in this menu here. And you can see up here it actually, or down here it says uh, two megahertz. There's the five volts peak to peak. So if we go down and we change the uh, amplitude, so I'm going to press the amplitude button, go over here, change it to say eight volts. And you can see here, we're eight volts peak to peak. And of course, negative four volts and positive four volts on the sine wave. So let's change the, uh, the wave type to a square wave. So I press the uh, wave button and I'm gonna select the square wave right here by pressing the button next to it. And you can see now we've gone actually to a, to a square wave. And the square wave looks uh, pretty good, the attacks on there. Uh, let's go to a, uh, let's go back to a, uh, put that 10 volts here. Let's change the wave to pulse. And so here's pulse type. Now in here, the actual duty cycle will make sense. Right now it's at, you can see it's at 50% right here, five zero. So the time that it's on, the time that it's off is exactly the same. So if I were to change this to say 90%, you can see that the uh, time that it's on is much greater than the time that it's off and vice versa. So depending on what you wanna do, you have those kinds of settings. Okay, let's go back to sine wave. And if I go down to, uh, let's say the uh, arbitrary waves, down here, you have some Lorenz pulses, and I'll just kind of scroll through them, sync, multi-tone, exponential decay. There's just straight up noise. There's a ladder. So there are quite a few of these in here. And you can actually go in, and it has these arbitrary waves where you're, if you hook it to a computer, you can actually program some specific waveform that you may actually want. Uh, another feature of this, which I'm, I'm not going to demo, so you'll have to just uh, take my word for it, is uh, I'm trying to get back here to, to sine wave. Here we go. Um, is you, you can press the measurement button here, and you can actually use this as an actually a frequency counter, uh, a frequency meter. And so if I do run uh, the output of one of my other signal generators here on the bench into it, it does actually read. It works. Uh, it works actually very well. You can use it as a frequency counter, or or it can actually just count the number of pulses it sees. So that's good for uh, so data acquisition projects that you're on. The other cool feature I didn't realize it had was in here when I purchased it was uh, uh, some modulation methods. So if you go in here, uh, you can actually set up a sweep and do sweep frequency modulation. So right now, um, I press the mod button. You can uh, hard to see that off the screen here. Let me go up. Let me turn just the top back on again. So right here, I press the uh, the mod button right here, and that gets me this other menu where we have some other other functions. And so we have uh, this is sweep frequency generator for channel one. Just turning the knob, channel two, uh, pulse generator. But just to give you an idea, just I'll give you one of these modulation mode examples for sweep frequency. Right now it's set to start at one kilohertz, 1000 hertz, and end at 10 kilohertz. 
and right now it's set to take 10 seconds to do that. So we're going to change that and say we want that to happen in, say, over one second. So let's change that to a zero, say one, zero. So now, and uh, let's, let's increase the, uh, the range here and say we want to go from one kilohertz to 50 kilohertz in one second. And it's going to continue to kind of keep repeating that. So let's turn that on. And let me turn on the, uh, you can see what the scope's actually doing. And there you go, you can see it sweeping from one kilohertz to 50 kilohertz. You can kind of almost see it down here. I don't know if you can see that number at the bottom, but you can, you can see it, the scope calculating it, trying to as fast as it can. So that works really good. So if you need to do uh, any sort of sweeps, that works. And uh, I think that's all we'll show in this demo. Hope that's uh, helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to message me. Okay, thank you.